In part one of lecture nine, we will discuss software essentials. Starting off this discussion on software with systems software seems non-obvious. We may all know what we want and need installed on our computers, but we aren't always sure why. Let's start by talking about the most important type of systems software the operating system. The operating system serves as an intermediary between the users and the programming that he or she is trying to run. It has direct control over the computer's hardware, which makes it easier for programmers because they can use and reuse software modules that control input output, and secondary storage. It also serves as a traffic cop of a sort, controlling who gets what resource and when. Popular modern operating systems include Microsoft Office, Mac OS and iOS from Apple, Linux, Unix, and Android and Chrome OS, those two both from Google. To make matters easy, the software that controls individual devices, such as monitors, keyboards, and disk drives, are modular. This approach means that these modules can be installed later. They are called device drivers because of how they control these devices. There are also utilities, programs that do some operating system like chores, like managing files, providing security, managing the network connection, and so on. Development software should really be called software development software but I guess the name would be confusing. The most basic software development tools are programming language translators. Computers don't understand C, BASIC, Java, C++, C Sharp, or any of these languages. They either need to translate programs written in these languages into something the computer understands, and save that translation. Or they translate it a line at a time and carry out the instruction they just read. Scripting languages are a bit different from other languages. Most of them were designed for specific applications and the programs that are written for these applications are not typically very large. HTML which is mainly the tags that we use to mark up a web page, JavaScript and PHP, which can make web pages more interactive, are all examples of scripting languages. Python and Ruby have more than one kind of application for which they're used. SQL, or SQL, Structured Query Language, is used very heavily in database work. This leaves quality assurance tools, the software used to determine whether the program works correctly and meets all of its specified requirements. These programs include debuggers, programs used to find and fix software bugs or mistakes in the program. In addition to debugging, there is load testing, where we try to determine if the software will be able to keep up with the volume of work that it is given. There is also security testing, where we try to make sure that the program can't get hacked, subjected to other misdeeds like people deleting, inserting, or changing data, intercepting data or communications, and so on. 
Any conversation about software begins with what software can do for us and what is its purpose. And the first type of software we need to discuss is application software, a term that covers all kinds of software with one thing in common. Application software is the very reason that we want to buy a computer, so we can manage our bank accounts, surf the web, play games, and so on. Among application software packages, there are productivity software like Microsoft Office and Google Apps. There are also professional tools that allow users to do things that are a bit more sophisticated, such as desktop publishing, which is more about layout than about text. It includes graphic design and special effects. There is also educational software that can engage students and their teachers in the learning process, both in the classroom and at home, or in other locations far away from the classroom. Application software also includes personal financial software. People use this to manage their bank accounts, prepare tax returns, plan retirement, and so on. The software that you see listed here may not seem as important, but it's here for a good reason. There is no shortage of entertainment software on a computer. It includes ebook readers like the Amazon Kindle, games, media players, and media editors. There are also a good number of reference programs that can access information on specific topics. It could include travel, sports, health and medicine, lifestyle, and more. And we can't forget about social media. Although most people use their browser to interact with Facebook and Twitter from the desktop, most mobile users have separate apps on their smartphones and tablets for this. Business software is a separate category, and the exact software will differ from company to company and industry to industry. Common applications that we would expect to see include accounting, inventory management, and billing. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, productivity software, which allows us to automate certain tasks that used to require pen, paper, typewriter, calculators, and slide projectors. Mobile devices need software as well, but the software that they use is different in several ways. Everything is stored in memory, so it has to be somewhat compact. Apps store their own files, so users don't need to worry about it. And the manner in which you navigate around the screen is different as well. 